So, we all know what a time signature is, those two numbers at the start of the tune. And we know that the top number tells us how many beats, or counts, are in each bar. Usually two, three, or four. But like we never talked about the bottom number. What's its shtick? So the bottom number tells us what type of note is used to measure the beats. Remember, a crotchet is also called a quarter note. So the bottom number four is a kind of secret code that tells us we are dealing with crotchet beats. Like 2-4 means that there are two crotchet beats in a bar. 3-4 means that there are three crotchet beats in a bar. And 4-4 means that there are four crotchet beats in a bar. How many beats? What type of beats? Let's put a time signature at the beginning of this tune. So we need to figure out how many beats will be in each bar, the top number, and what type of beats they are, the bottom number. Now it looks like we can group everything neatly into crotchet beats, like so. So I feel pretty confident that the bottom number will be 4. As for the top number, all we need to ask ourselves is how many crotchet beats are in each bar. 1, 2, 3. 1 and 2 and 3 and 1, 2, 3. 3 crotchet beats in each and every bar. So 3 goes on top. So it really boils down to note values. What we're doing when we're counting is we're uh, describing out loud different note values. Uh, so the three biggies, when we start at sort of grade zero, are quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes, otherwise known as crotchets, quavers, and semiquavers. Crotchets, or quarter notes, are the basic notes uh, that we see in music. They're just a note that's, uh, head with a straight stem, and I'll put the um, pictures on the screen of the notes. And they just are the basic numbers in music, right? This is it. This is the quarter note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if you're in four, four, I'm going to assume through this video we're in four, four, four beats in the bar. That just means one hit on every beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. That was three bars worth I played there. Then quarter notes, eighth notes are the notes you see on the page that have one line beaming them up uh, to, to each other, assuming that you've got two of them, and they are one and, two and, three and, four and, if you have a whole bar of them. The and is written as a plus sign. So uh, the, the really important point, I think, as, we, as you move from quarter notes to eighth notes, from crotchets to quavers, is that the numbers haven't moved at all. You just added in another note in between, they're the ands. So now eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Obviously what I'm doing here is I'm playing the note value all the way through the bar. That isn't, you know, by any means what always happens in music. I'm just doing that to demonstrate the note values here. So here's a bar of quarter notes or crotchets. One, two, three, four. Here's a bar of eighth notes or quavers. One and two and three and four and. Notice that the numbers, the beat, is in the same place each time. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. You with me so far? Quarter notes and eighth notes. Crotchets and quavers. Crotchets. One, two, three, four. Quavers. One and two and three and four and. The next note value that comes in is sixteenth notes or semi-quavers. These are the ones that you see typically, especially at the beginning of your drumming career, like grade zero, grade one, in little groups of four, with two lines beaming the note stems together at the top. This is where the E and the R uh comes in. This is where people start getting confused. Not everybody, but some people, in my experience. Now, one E and a uh is the noises, the labels that we apply to four sixteenth notes, which take one beat in music to complete. One E and a. Uh. The one is the number. Number one, E is the letter E, lowercase e, and is the same and that we had in eighth notes, that's the plus sign, and A, uh, usually written as the letter A, will finish it off. One E and A, uh, two E and A, uh, three E and A, uh, four E and A uh, is a bar of sixteenth notes, right? So 
So I'm going to play a bar of quarter notes, a bar of eighth notes, and then a bar of sixteenth notes. And I'll count out loud all the way through, otherwise known as crotchets, quavers, and semiquavers. Notice how when I go from quarter notes to eighth notes, the numbers are still in the same place. We're just adding a note in, in between. And likewise, when we go from eighth notes to sixteenth notes, we're also just adding in a little uh, note in between. So the one and two and three and four and are still in place. We just switch up to one E and up, uh, two E and up. Uh. Quarter notes, two, three, four, eighth notes, one and two and three and four, sixteenth notes, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. And again, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. The triplet, the eighth note triplet, right? Now triplets are the ones with a little three written over the top. Uh, they're, when they're eighth note triplets, they're written as eighth notes, as quavers, as in they've got one line joining the stem up. But I always thought this was where music theory just got a little bit weird, a little bit illogical. It's no big deal once you once you wrap your head around it. But they're still quavers, but we must be playing them a bit quicker here now, right? Because we're playing three in the space of where we'd normally find two. What that number over the top of the music is telling you is that you're phrasing or playing this particular note value differently from the default way of doing it. The default way of doing quavers or eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. When you play eighth note or quaver triplets, you're gonna go one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So it's three evenly spaced out hits throughout the beat. Now that evenly spaced out bit is really important because the thing you see the most here with guys and girls first getting to know this is that they play, when they're trying to play triplets, they play the one E and, two E and, three E and, four E and rhythm that I was talking about earlier. There, as we said, there's a gap at the end, isn't there? One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Whereas with the triplets, there isn't a gap at the end or anywhere. They're an evenly spaced, flowing, three in the beat feel. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. A couple of cool ways you can stick your triplets. At first, you can do a single stroke roll. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, which works fine. One, two, three, four. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four. Sixteenth notes, one E and two E and a three E and a four E and one, two, three, four. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four. Sixteenth notes, one E and two E and a three E and a four E and one, two, three, four. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four. Sixteenth notes, one E and two E and a three E and a four E and one E, two E, three E. One E, two E, three E, four E. One E, two E, three E, four E. One E, two E, three E, four E. One E, two, three E, four. One E, two, three E, four. One E. One E, two, three E, four. One E and two E and three four. One E and two E and three E and four E and. One E and two E and three four. One E and two E and three E and four E and. One E and two E and. One E and two E and three E and four E and. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet. 